Are you looking to self-publish a book with mazes? Have you been curious about maze software? Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to do a Simply Maze Crazy review and tutorial and show you how to make a maze book. So stick around. Hey, Write Writers, Keith Wheeler here. And if you want to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing easier, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out something new. In the past, I've shown you how to make puzzle books. Another type of no-content book that has been very profitable for me lately is maze books. But enough talk. I'm going to flip the screen around, and I'm going to show you how to make maze books. I've been self-publishing books with mazes for a few months now, and I've already found a huge return on investment. The maze software I'm going to show you is called Simply Maze Crazy. Fun fact, I actually found out about the software first from a viewer on one of my live streams. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to my affiliate link, which is kwheelerbooks.com slash mazes. And again, full disclosure, this is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I do get a little bit of compensation. Um, now, going to the site does not make it the purchase for you. You can go in, you watch the video, um, and read about it if you want, in addition to what I show you in the video here, and you can make your own decision. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to member login. It already has my information saved, so I'm just gonna click login. Now, I'll be honest, when I first started self-publishing books, I never would have guessed that I'd be self-publishing maze books, but I am. So here we are on the main page. You can join, there is a Facebook group that you can join. Uh, you can just click that button to get there. Um, here's another video. And I'm just gonna go through, here's the welcome page, which is the page we're on. This is where you actually create your mazes. Um, full tutorials on the different elements that are in here. So again, you can do that. Uh, this is experimental, which I'll get to that in a second. Um, and if you have any help, you can click on this. And then this is to log out. So it's all fairly intuitive right off the bat. So let's get to the important stuff. Let's get to creating the mazes. And here we are. Uh, there's a tab for maze and solutions. I'll show you that in a second. Scroll down here. Here's the complexity bar. The first thing you wanna do is set the color of the maze. So it defaults to black. If you want it to be stay black, that's fine. If you want to change the color, you just click on it and you can pick any color in the spectrum and then click OK. I like the black. You can decide whether you want your mazes to have a starting point and an ending point. Most will, but I will show you in a second what it looks like if you do not. And then sometimes you may choose that you don't want to generate a solution. And if that's the case, you would just deselect the box. I want a solution, so I'm going to leave that clicked. So I want a starting point, I want an ending point, and I want to generate a solution. The solution, I don't want it to be black because I want it to be different than the color of the maze itself. So I just click in here. I usually like to pick like a green, something that will really stand out. Uh, let's, let's do that green. I click OK. And then now we're focusing on the complexity. Obviously 11 is going to be super easy. Uh, I'll just hit generate just so you can see how easy they are. That is the easiest maze I can think of. Uh, and if you click on the solution, as you can see in that green color shows you exactly how to do it. This would probably be perfect for someone who's a toddler, you know, just getting the eye hand coordination it would be nice for a level 11. And then you can click download maze, download solution, and it will just download to your downloads folder. Um, I'll just click on those real quick and then I'll head over to here. And as you can see, there's the maze, there's the solution. Uh, one thing I really love is how the files are saved. It's saved one is a PNG, so it's a transparent background, but also just the naming convention maze 11, which is your complexity and the letter C which stands for complexity. So this is the maze, the level 11 complexity. And then this is the maze solution for level 11 complexity. So let's get a little more complex than that. We're gonna hit reset. And we're just gonna scroll over to, let's do probably like a 23. This is still something that would be more for a youth, but a lot more complex. Um, again, because we have the solution turned on and in green, 
If I click over here, there's the solution to it. And again, I can just download the maze and download the solution. Now I want to show you how complex these get. If we go all the way over here, this is great for if you're doing maze book for adults. So I made it the hardest complexity, generate. Now obviously it takes a little bit longer to generate because it's more complex. There's your maze. And again, because I select the solution, there's the solution to it. And again, I can just download maze, download the solution. That's how you do the mazes. And then the experimental is actually, once it's completely up and running, is going to be amazing because it is a bulk uploader. It maxes out at 10, I believe, yeah, 10. And it, everything else is pretty much the same, except you will select the quantity you want to do, so 10, and then you just click bulk. The issue with it right now, because it's an experimental, is it times out, so many times you'll get less than the number of mazes that you've asked for. But again, I mean, it, it says experimental, so once they've gotten all the bugs out of it, it will no longer be experimental and it will have its own tab. So let me show you, let me reset and I'm going to show you a puzzle just to show you what it looks like without a starting point or ending point. And we'll hit generate. And as you can see, there's no starting point or ending point. You can create your own starting point and ending point within the maze itself. Download this, put it into your book, and then you can put like a, a red dot here or a green dot here, however you want to do that. And the great thing is because these mazes are generated using a mathematical equation, every point connects to each other. So if I put a starting point right here or right here, there is a way for it to end here. One of these paths will lead it to it. So that's the great thing about it being generated mathematically as opposed to being generated manually. Let's generate some mazes so I can show you how to make them your own. Reset, let's do one for kids. So I'm gonna make it a 31. Generate the maze, that should be good. Download maze, download solution. Now I will say the other thing about the bulk uploader is right now it's not really that big of a deal because like that just generated one, I can literally just click maze and as I do this, it's generating a different version of it. I just downloaded the second one, third one, fourth one. So as you can see, it doesn't take long to generate multiple mazes. And as we'll see when I click on the folder, that they're all, they're all different paths. I'm gonna show you how to make a maze book, how to take these images and make them your own. I just go into PowerPoint and I just have a blank PowerPoint open. I want to make mine for kids. So I'm gonna make it eight and a half by 11. So I'll go to design. Slide size, custom slide size. We're gonna make this eight and a half by 11. Ensure fit. I'm just gonna hit control A and delete. Okay, and now we're just gonna create our maze. So we're gonna insert pictures. I'm just going to stretch it, make this bigger. Okay, we'll send it right there. That yeah, looks good. Now, I want to make it different. I don't want it to, to look plain Jane. So, uh, because this is for kids, um, let's just say that we're doing a book that's about pirates. You know, maybe you've got a children's book out there and it's about pirates. So, what do we do? We're going to head on over to pixabay.com. Um, now, because I'm doing it for kids, I want a vector image. We're going to do pirates. So let's click type in pirates. Let's see. Let's do, I like this guy. This is going to be a pirate. And let's go back. And if he's our starting pirate, where's he going to go for it? Well, he's got to go for a treasure map, right? So here's his treasure map. Okay, and there they are right there. So now we'll go back to our PowerPoint and we're going to insert picture. Uh, let's do the parrot. Make him smaller. Put him over here at the start. 
insert picture treasure map treasure map's a little too big let's make that a little smaller there we go and there we have it very quickly took from being a plain maze to now it's a maze for our main character to get to the treasure map but what if i don't like the background you know i don't want it to be white i don't want it to be plain so we can go back to our good friends over here at pixabay and uh, let's search up some parchment if i can spell I like this one. We'll download it. And then go back to our PowerPoint. I'm going to insert pictures, paper. And there we go. I'm going to make it a little bigger so it goes beyond the borders of the book. Okay. Now, obviously, I can't see the maze or the characters through here, so I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm gonna send it to the back. There we go. Now if I wanna make my character a little bigger, I can do that. And that's how we made one page of our maze book. Now I need to add a new slide. Again, just gonna control A, delete. And if I'm going to keep with the same theme, then I actually can just copy this this slide as many times as I need and just replace the mazes and move my characters around as I see fit. Maybe instead of doing a map, maybe on the next one, it'll be a treasure chest or it can be, you know, it can be a boat, a pirate ship instead of the parrot, whatever you want to do. And if you've decided to create solutions for your mazes, which you absolutely don't have to, you know, I've seen plenty of books that don't have the solutions, but if you do, obviously you want to make sure that you insert at the end of the book your solutions. So again, I'm just going to go to insert. And since this was the 31C parentheses 3 maze, then I need the 31C parentheses 3 solution. I'm going to click over here, see what the size of this original was. Um, I've upped it to 8.29, so I'm going to click in here and just change this to 8.29 as well. And then I'll center this, and then as you can see, it's the solution to that maze. Now I will say one of the limitations to this software is that as of now, all of the mazes, if you have a starting point and ending point, the starting point and ending points are at the top and at the bottom. There's none on the left or right. But there's a quick fix to that. You just take the maze, if you want to change things around, just take this little rotate tool and you can literally rotate it. And now you've got left side, right side. So again, and then obviously you just move your characters over. Now, in this case, I'll probably have to shrink this down a bit so it'll fit so it doesn't get kicked off, cut off the margins. Now, in something like this, because I've got the parchment paper and everything else, I'm going to want to make sure that I have bleed on this. There you have it. All right. So you've seen it all. So now it's for the important part, which is the pros and the cons of the Simply Maze Crazy software. Pros. Number one is it's an online system, which means you don't have to bother downloading anything onto your computer. Because of that, you know you're always running the most updated version, so you don't have to worry about opening something up on your computer and waiting for it to connect to the server and download the most updated version. You, As you're running it, it's the most updated. Two is ease of use. As you saw, it's fairly intuitive. You just go step by step, slider bar, hit a couple buttons, and you're done. The next pro is the multiple complexities that it does. I mean, everything from something for like a toddler all the way up to a super complex version. You can do all of that, including solutions. The next pro is the flexibility of the software. You can adjust the maze color. 
you can adjust the color of the solution. Do you want it with a start point or without a start point? Maybe you don't even want to include solutions at all. Next pro is the speed of the generator. I mean, you saw just a matter of hitting the scroll bar and I click generate and even the most complex one was still generated within a matter of seconds. So you can see, as I showed you earlier, that you can do just multiple mazes. And what I like to do in my books is I don't like to do one book of just all the same complexity. So what I'll typically do if it's going to be a 40 page book, if it's for kids, I will do, you know, 10 of complexity 23, 10 of complexity 32 and so on. So I stay within, you know, within a few ranges for the kids. So they're not super complex, but they're not all the same complexity level. They range even within the same book. The next pro is the naming convention. Very clean and more importantly, very clear naming conventions. Not only does it say the, whether it's a maze or a solution, but it even gives you the complexity level of that particular maze and solution. The next pro is that it saves it as a PNG, which means that it has a transparent background. So as you saw in my tutorial, you can actually create a book and put a different page color behind there. Uh, you, whether it's different designs or like parchment paper like I did. So because they're saving it as a PNG with the transparent background, you have a lot more flexibility with what you can do with those images. And last but certainly not least, as far as the pros is concerned, is that it has the tutorials. So if this tutorial wasn't enough for you, you can still go in, check out the tutorials that Rob, the creator, did. And he, you know, he goes into even more in depth than I do. So I didn't even list this as a, as a pro, but it should be noted again that they do have the Facebook group page where Rob goes in there and will tell you updates on the system as well as other things that he's working on. Now, as I've said before, it's not all unicorns and rainbow farts. There are some cons to this software. The first con is that, as I said, all mazes currently have the starting point and ending points somewhere on the top and on the bottom. They don't have anything on the right or the left. Although I did show you a way just by using the rotation tool within whatever software you're using, you can make it so it does go left and right. So even though it is a limitation with the software right now, there is a workaround that is fairly easy to accomplish. Con number two is again with the software, I don't know if this is gonna change in the future, but as of now, all of the mazes are in the shape of a square. It would be nice to have other shapes that we can do besides squares, you know, circles, triangles, maybe around the holidays, Christmas trees, bells. So that would that's a nice to have, but it's not a deal breaker as far as I'm concerned. Because as I said, you can do it as a PNG, so you can put that star or that Christmas tree or whatever in the background. And so even though the image is a square, you can still put a shaped image around it. And the third con that I could think of, and this is a bit of a stretch, is the bulk generator. It does have some bugs in it, but that said, I really don't even think I can count this as a con because it's in the experimental tab. Like it's telling you right off the bat, it's experimental. It's gonna have bugs. But in full disclosure, I felt I had to bring that up as a con. So I'd love to hear what you think about this software. Let me know in the comments below. If you want to check out Simply Maze Crazy for yourself, then just head on over to kwheelerbooks.com slash mazes. Now, if you're thinking of creating maze books, then you should check out a previous live that I did where I give some tips and tricks on selling puzzle books in general. You can click on this link right here and it'll take you right to it. Or you can check out this video that YouTube says you're gonna love. I'll see you in the videos. Remember to write right.